Hello friends, I'm David Vost. Today is December the 12th, 2016. It's great to see everybody today. Well, I'm going to do number two in the astrology series. I think I'm going to go ahead and make quite a few of these because, wow, actually we're getting into the meat. We started off in my videos when we first started just talking about the Bible and how we were so deceived about that book. We found out just about everything we were told is completely the opposite. And because I, I really wanted to teach the ancient mysteries, astrology, um, the hidden wisdom, the mysteries that the Apostle Paul spoke of that he said he knew so well. And I really wanted to talk about it and help ordinary Christians that have been so duped. I mean, forgive me for saying that over and over again, because I was a Christian like that, in a, a very strict Christian denomination, and everything was the devil, and we were scared to do anything and everything. But forgive me for saying that, because the truth is, is that we're all duped, everybody. Even if you've read New Age books, or you're into yoga, or you're into... Just everything is a big lie in following blind guides, Jesus said. So, I'm not cutting down Christianity, what it should be. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm not cutting down astrology. I teach astrology. But what I'm saying is, is that the ancient wisdom that used to be has come down to us as an apostate understanding because the teachers have been murdered. You have no idea how hard the Catholic Church worked. Rome wiped out all the esoteric wisdom. At the time of Christ, there were communal orders and esoteric societies all over the world. It was springing up everywhere and truth was being made known and people were learning but it was completely stamped out by the Catholic Church and they started burning the libraries and the books and murdering people. So it all had to go underground. And this is why today it's called the occult because that means the hidden wisdom, the, the hidden. This is why it was all, they're all secret and everything. That's, they're evil. No. Originally, this group that had to go underground, they weren't evil. You see, if they didn't, they would never have gone underground. They would have taught to the world love and peace it was the governments that were afraid that their power would be taken from them to begin to impose restrictions on truth and knowledge and light so but i want you know so so a lot of christians are saying oh that's not the bible you're just a deceiver you're deceiving people but you don't understand. Give me a chance. I can't explain this all of this to you in a few minutes. But remember, you know that Christianity is deceived. There's, there's hundreds of different Christian religions that they all contradict each other. Yeah, but we all believe Jesus. And you don't believe Jesus. Yes, I do believe Jesus. But you must understand that as the apostle said that the things that they were teaching were spiritually discerned you see the apostle paul says that what he was teaching now listen carefully what they taught was the cross he said oh see that's what christians teach the cross now stuff you're teaching dave that's not true that's that's just uh esoteric mumbo jumbo well listen to what the apostle paul says what he was teaching, he says, was a stumbling block to Jews. See, most Christians today are, are much like a Jew. It's all a bunch of ceremonies and rituals, and, and it's just a stumbling block that, that, that I teach just esoteric wisdom. That's a stumbling block to them because they want it written down, law, boom, eye for an eye, and so I know what I believe. But they can't follow spiritual intuition. They don't, they don't even know the spirit. So it's a stumbling block for those who are like Jews or today's Christians that 
basically just believe in law. This is the way it is and that's it, you know. But to a Greek, it's just foolishness. All this esoteric wisdom for a lot of people, they're just foolishness. And to show you that this is really what Paul was trying to say, that all these words that he was giving them, all of this explanation, is not a bunch of laws and literal, you know, this is what we do when you get baptized, when you get dunked and a little sprinkle and this and that and everything, and if you believe you're saved, and that's it. He goes on to say in the second chapter, 1 Corinthians, that was the first chapter of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1, 23, but go to the second chapter of Corinthians, and, and, and uh, let me look that up here for just a second and read that to you. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, and I want to read it verbatim, word for word, so that you you um i don't miss anything it says um we have not received the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we may understand what god has freely given us and this is what we speak not in words taught us by human wisdom but words taught by the spirit expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words the, nat the natural man does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spir spiritually discerned. So, what do you think the Apostle Paul is talking about? See, because Christians are always talking about, well, I'm very spiritual, and, uh, I'm, I, you know, and, and uh, the Bible's the Spirit, and I, I, the Spirit teaches me. But do you know what you're saying? You see, Astrology isn't words taught by human wisdom. It isn't something that you can even, poss you could never possibly learn all of the things that astrology will teach you. And, and we're going to get into that here in this video. We're going to really get into it. Really, what is astrology? What, Dave, what is this thing? Because people are talking about astrology and the occult and stuff, and it just, for most of us, it just seems like, what are they talking about? Talking to spirits or something? That's not for me. No, it's not about talking to spirits. That's not what it's about. It's about spiritual wisdom. It's about who you are. It's about gaining mastery and having the twin flame ignited upon your head. It's about having Christ come into your temple and lighting the seven candles. It's about being born again. And if you want to know what that really is, if you really want to be born again and you want to receive the Holy Spirit, then you need to listen to this video, this series of videos, because this is the spiritual information that the Apostle Paul was talking about that's not taught with human wisdom, but it's spiritually discerned because these, these symbols teach us through spiritual means. We need to understand by meditating and contemplating these ancient symbols, the great wisdom. And this is what astrology is. It's just a bunch of symbols that depict as a, in a dramatic fashion the, 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 the stars and rotations of moons and earth. What's all that? I don't want to know all that, right? I don't like astronomy, you know. Uh, you know, the stars are pretty, but that's not going to have any effect on me. Well, what you don't understand is it has a direct effect on you. What is above is also below. Because everything in the universe is one. And we've got to understand how it's all interconnected. Because a lot of astrologers today are just interested in telling you your fortune, your future. And that's not really what's important. Astrology is much greater than that. Astrology is, see, you, a lot of you wonder, well, just how in the world are these planets and all this stuff going to affect me? I want truth. I want to be saved. Oh, friends, you don't understand. When you, after we've gone through this series of videos, you're going to understand what salvation is. You see, every atom has an energy center. And around every atom are electrons, electromagnetic metals. Electromagnetism is this thing we call gravity and force, electricity. So it's the same with our sun. We have this 
fire in the middle, this energy, light, radiation, the god Ra, radius, the rays of the sun. And around the sun, we have planets that each one is a different metal. And those electromagnetics affect everything. Not just in our solar system. You know, the moon comes up and regulates the cycles of ovulation, the tides, the sun comes up and everything grows, the sun goes down and everything dies. See, we're heavily affected by these amazing stars and planets. But what you don't realize is that Mercury in the constellation has a very powerful effect and that there is a science behind all of this. Mercury and Mars and Venus and Saturn and Jupiter. There are seven of these planets, the Demiurge, and they make form because you see it's the metals that create the form. And so the metals are that grosser electromagnetic structure that pulls in and forms our body. And so, as the solar system has the seven planets, so in your body, it corresponds to central places in your body, just as it corresponds to the atom. We just made the parallel where an atom has a sun and electrons or planets going around it. So our solar system, and so does your body. And so, as above, so below. We've got to understand astrology because it's an integration of the entire world and system. And you say, well, what am I going to do with all this information? You've got to know how to keep your body functioning properly. You've got to know how to become spiritual. You've got to be born again. You've got to ignite the twin flame. You cannot, do you understand that there are, there is an entire system going on? You have 12 separate systems in your body. Just like the universe has 12 signs. And there are seven chakras. And the solar plexus, see, that's Leo. It doesn't go, it starts at Aries and goes around. And there are 12 signs. And the 12 signs actually go from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. Aries, the ram, or the mountain, the pinnacle, that pushes forward like a ram. And Pisces is the bottom with the fish. You get two feet. And there's the two fish that Jesus gave with the, with the five loaves. Because the five loaves represents the, the physical senses. And, and the ram or the head of the rams is up on top. And that's the mountain. That's where Moses went, you know, right at, at, uh, at Passover time. And Aries, spring time right at the time where Jesus died, right? Passover time, the spring equinox where we go and we make the crossing and then we awaken to spring. And this is the beginning of the year. But it all ends in Pisces and then it's reborn again and this is the cross. So Aries is the head. Pisces is all the way around. The other end is the feet. So the heart is over here on the other, other side. The human is like an embryo from the head to the feet, from Aries to Pisces. And the heart, the solar plexus, is Leo over here. So it goes Aries and then Taurus and Gemini and Cancer, Leo, Virgo. And those are the six signs in the top side of the astrological chart. And they represent the signs from here all the way down to here. And then the seventh is Libra, which is the scales. And it's the autumn equinox. So there's a cross on that side as well. There are two crosses. And so when it gets down to this cross there in Libra, you get to the evening or to the to the scales of Libra, of judgment. And then you go down into the dark side. And this is the 
the, the journey into Egypt that we all take. And this is where Saturn rules, and this is the devil. Saturn, you see, is that seventh planet. They couldn't see Uranus and Neptune. And so the seven planets don't include those. And so, you know, there's more evidence there, right there. You want evidence that the Old Testament God, Yahweh, Jehovah, is really the devil, Satan? See, we, we, in all my videos, I give you tons and tons of proof that, you know, this wrathful God, the uh, Yahweh Sabaoth, Sabaoth, that is the God of war, which is certainly not at all like our Father in Heaven who is light, who is love, who has no wrath. There is no wrath in Him. There is no darkness in union with Him at all. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you. Moses condemns you. I don't condemn you. But I came to give you life. You see, the Son of Life shall arise with healing in its wings. But you go down there in the darkness, and who rules that? Saturn. And so who is the God of the Jews? Jesus said, your God is from beneath. He's down there in the bottom. My Father's above. Your Father's beneath. And He is the, the God whose day is Saturday. Right? This is the holy day of the Jews. Saturnalius. Saturn. Satan. The one who is from beneath. So there is the one of the best evidences that this God Jehovah chose for his day of rest, his day of worship, he chooses a day and names it after himself, Saturn. You see, well, Christians worship on Sunday because the sun gives life and it's the resurrection and it's rebirth. You see, but the Old Testament is down there in the darkness. In, in Saturnalia's day. And so, who wanted Jesus to die? Our Father in Heaven? Absolutely not. See, it's our Father in Heaven that creates all things and, and gives us life. But it's down there in the darkness, that God beneath, that demands all of these things from us. And it's Satan who brings that darkness, the great night. And right there at the autumn equinox, the sun goes down over the, over the cross and he is crucified and he goes down into hell and he makes his descent. And so, friends, you see the parallels? We're Christians. We worship. We're Christians and we're not Jews. And the Apostle Paul says, don't Judaize. Don't do it. You who want to be under law, do you not hear the law? It's all about slavery. He talks about that in Galatians. In the book of Colossians, he says that the law was nailed to the cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ conquered all of the principalities, which in Greek, principalities, lords and thrones and dominions. But in Greek, principality is archon. This is the Gnostic archons. These are these all of these gods and these lower rulers in this ark. And Jesus went down into hell and conquered all of the archons, the principalities and the lords and the thrones and the dominions. And he was raised up on the third day. And this is the resurrection. These planets have an effect upon us not only, as you might think, because we have physical bodies and, and, you know, the sun affects us and so the planets are going to affect us. But how do they affect us? Through certain central magnetic locations, centers. Because our body is designed exactly after the same pattern as the whole universe. This is the macrocosm. We're a microcosm of the whole universe. And so we have... See... That's not in the Bible. Yes, look at Job chapter 38. It says, Can you lead the Maseroth in its seasons? That's 
It's in the Bible, friends. The Maseroth is the Jewish word for the Zodiac. Can you lead them in their seasons? Do you know the ordinances of heaven? This is a law that our Father in heaven made for the heavens and for us. It is established. And then it says, talks about the sweet influences of the Pleiades. What is that? And the cords of Orion. See, if you look in the sky, that's the location in the sky where the Pleiades is that forms the halo. And we get spiritual, spiritual energies from the Pleiades. It's all connected. And each one of the planets that comes down has its place in, in the energy rings. And we have rings and vibrations in our bodies and, and, and energy centers. So Leah's here in the solar plexus. And that's the feeling. And the, the some people think from from here. And some people think from here. Very few people think from here. But most people think from here. And this is the cerebellum. The part of the brain that is below the cerebrium. The cerebrium is the super consciousness. That's, when that's enlightened and you get to that, then you're born again. You've opened up the energies, the thousand petal lotus of, of the Eastern wisdom or the twin flame of Hebrew esoteric wisdom It's in the Bible. When you bring together the two flames, the spiritual and the physical, the inner Christ has lit up all the seven chakras, the energy centers. It, the flame ignites. And the cerebrium, or the superconscious part, the brain that receives information from the, from the superconscious mind of our Father in heaven. And then you're born again. Because this is finally awakened. The Christ in you is awakened. But below that, just right back here, in the back part of the brain, the part of the brain that's called the cerebella. You know, and this is the cerebral cortex. Which is made out of copper, by the way. And your pineal gland is made out of uh, carbon. And this is how you, you, you get energy. You don't need electricity from a machine or a motor. You can get electricity right out of the earth or out of the air. You just need two similar metals. This is the whole secret. And this is why your, your cerebral cortex has a lot of copper in it. But your, but your pineal gland is made out of a carbon crystal. And it, these two dissimilar metals pulls the liquids and the energies up from the from the base from these organs and and glands down here but if you don't have your body working properly you're not going to get these fluids coming up making your body alive and 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 the energy flow so that you can receive energy from our father in heaven back and forth between the cerebrium and the cerebral cortex so a lot of people think that we're supposed to you know, awaken the subconscious mind. See, think about the word sub. That's beneath, below. We don't want the subconscious mind. Most of us are, are operating on that now. The subconscious is where all the instinctual things go on, right? We're just controlled by the subconscious. You know, we do things out of habit. We're addicted to this physical realm and we've got to sleep and we've got to eat and we've got to do this. That's the subconscious mind. And we're all being controlled by that. What you need to do is find contact with the superconscious mind. See, the right side of the brain. Because the lower part down in here in the cerebellum, that's controlling the left side of the brain. So you've got the left side of the brain that's asleep right now. Well, it, it's awake, <laughs> I should say. And the cerebrium, which is asleep right now, that's Christ, it's asleep in this boat. And the whole, so, so astrology then is not nonsense. You've got to understand the science of how to awaken Christ within your boat. And when you learn how to do that and light those candles and have those energies flowing, then you're going to know and recognize Christ. Like the apostles, they recognize him. They're gonna be you're going to be enlightened. You're going to eat from the honey that Christ gave the apostles, that enlightenment, which trickles down from the cerebrum, right down into the uh, cerebral cortex 
and, 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 and rains down from the sweet influences of the Pleiades right down into the, the energies and the, and the other centers and glands and you're going to be alive and you can literally bring vitality to, to your body in healing not only in the physics but in the spirit not only in your body so that you're well and you feel well and you feel good and energetic and happy and in the hormones and in the emotions, but also in your knowledge and in your enlightenment and in your understanding. And when you open up that Christ chakra, there will nothing be impossible for you. When Christ wakes up in the boat, he commands the waves of the sea and they obey him. The emotions just, see, emotions, that's what they are, is they're, it's motion, but it's too much. And you need to bring the emotion down. You don't want to waste energy. And the wind, the thoughts that just swimming around in your head, it's stirring up all this emotion, it's got to be calmed. And the only way you can do that is to stop thinking from the subconscious brain and start thinking from your superconscious, from your cerebrum, from the right side. And this is why Jesus said, stop trying to fish and get productivity and be fed, you know, the fish. Stop trying to get that from the left side of the boat, but fish on the right side of the boat. And they went fishing and all of a sudden they caught 153 fish, which they were 200 feet from the shore. It's an equation, a Pythagorean equation. It was two circles that were put Two circles that touch each other, and where they touch, it makes a fish sign. And that had a certain ratio of 153 over 200, and that's the Pythagorean fish ratio. That is the, the great ratio that everything in the universe is based on. And this is in the Bible, and this is astrology, and this is the great esoteric wisdom that if you learn nothing will be impossible for you. So you see, astrology is an amazing science because it's not just in the science of the stars, but it's a science of ourselves, our bodies and our spiritual lives. And it gives us a knowledge of who we were. It explains who we are as, a, as, as human beings for thousands of years, where we're going in the future. But not only that, far more than that, it explains how we can become all the way to our potential. No matter who you are, if you can grasp and begin to practice and believe in purity. See, there are seven vices that keep us bound, these negative forces. And we understand and we begin to learn that there really is a way out, that we can reverse this and turn the the lead into gold. We can begin to receive those influences from the Pleiades and open up the spiritual awareness and transform their seven vices into seven virtues and overcome this physical realm that we're entrapped and bound by our lusts and envy and fears and cast out those demons and those phobias. We can know Christ and he is knocking at the door. And all you have to do is open the door. But you've got to know where the door is. And you've got to know that he's knocking. You've got to hear his voice. Whoever opens the door, he's going to come in and have supper. See, this is all very symbolic. The Bible talks about the temple with the 12 gates. And they shall go in and go out no more. Isn't that what you want? Don't you want the white robe? Your immortality? Do you want the rapture? See, the true rapture is to be changed. And you've got to understand what this change is. It's not some, you know, mythological rapture where we get taken up into the sky. It's not like that. That's just, that's mythology. What Christians teach is just mythology because they're teaching this literal story that, that's just, it's like, you know, if you think that Cronus had 12 sons and ate them and, and Zeus came along and opened him up and, you know, and got him out. If you think that's a true story, you're, you're a child. You're foolish. Those stories are symbolic. They are esoteric 
They are to be understood spiritually by those who are mature in Christ. See, it's foolishness to many and a stumbling block to others. But for those who have eyes to see, it's eternal life. And it's, it's the words of Jesus, who Peter said had the words of eternal life. So if you would like to know about these ancient truths and this great, these great mysteries, if you'd like to learn how to have health and healing and understanding and have Christ be born in you and to know what it really means to receive the Holy Spirit and to be born again, then I recommend that you watch all of these videos. We're going to do a series of videos about astrology and what it really is, not what they say it might be, but what the ancient wisdom really taught. And I'm going to show you how you can open up the chakras and where you are from your natal chart and who you are and where you're going and how you fit into this this whole puzzle because you see if you're watching this video more than likely there's something stirring inside of you and you know that you're a part of this this awakening that's happening see they tried this awakening has tried to take root many times in human history but Satan came down and 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 stamped it out but it's not going to happen this time because the light is going to shine See, Christ is coming back. Christ is that son of righteousness that shall rise up with healing power in his wings. And he comes in the clouds of heaven. And every eye shall see him. Just as the sun rises in the east and shines all the way into the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be, like the sun. It comes in the clouds of heaven. And friends, every eye will see. But you and I, we're going to be a part of this enlightening work to help others to come to the great truth and to the knowledge that brings everlasting life. So friends, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. And that will give you some food for thought. And then we're going to have another video in the number three coming up after this one. You guys have a great week. This is David Bolson. We'll see you again tomorrow.